and welcome to episode 14 of Watercolour Wiz. This time we're going to paint this fabulous lily and we're going to use two colours only in order to paint this. Two complementary colours and the colours are Cadmium Orange Hue and Indan Throne Blue. If you haven't got the exact colours then any basic mid orange will do and any blue with a tiny bit of uh, purple in it should do. Okay, So let's get down to sorting this one out. Alright, so what I've done with this watercolour whiz is I've decided to put a little buffer of masking fluid all the way around it. So when we're dropping the colour on and doing all the shaping for the leaves with the tones light to dark, I've got freedom of movement and I haven't got to worry so much about you know going outside of the actual shapes of the petals. So I just do this as an aid and then when I've painted the flower and it's dry, I rub that all away. So um, please feel free to do this if you want to, just paint the masking fluid around there, let it dry for at least 20 minutes and make sure that it's, you know, it's not wet when you start painting. Also I've masked out the stamens because as you can see they are going to be lighter than the background. Uh, of the petals, so the petals are darker than the stamens. I haven't masked out the sort of, I think they're anthers, I'm not sure, the top bits where the sort of pollen is held and everything. Um, I haven't masked those out because obviously they are darker brown than the leaves, so they show up. So we've got dark against a lighter colour and then light against a darker colour. So we've got counter change there and that'll make an interesting uh, feature of the flower. Also, before we get going, just a general talk about how we are going to handle a light and dark. Obviously, we can see that the petals over on the right are catching more light, and, and the right hand side there, and the right hand side top there. And then some tips here, but mostly on the left, we've got the darker shades, the darker shadows, and you've got some lovely cast shadows of the anthers onto the sunlit parts of the lily petal here and a lovely cast shadow of this big leaf onto this lower leaf here and another anther sort of cast shadow which is lovely isn't it and um, we'll, we'll pay good attention to those and we'll be doing that detail right at the end but for now what I'm going to do is uh, my masking fluid is dry now so I'm going to get I've got my uh, cadmium orange here and my inland throne blue ready so now I'm going to get some water in the middle of the well here, pick up some cadmium orange here and mix a dilution about that strong. Okay, And I'm going to get this all over the lily. And as I say, this is great, isn't it? I haven't got to be careful now about the edges because the masking fluid's doing that job for me. This is... Uh, nice feel and you can just get it on easily. Right, so there's a basic colour of the lily on. Now, when you look at the flower, as I mentioned, there's darker strength of orange more or less on the left hand side with some bits elsewhere and again on the grey scale it shows us that more clearly doesn't it we can clearly see the paler areas on these leaves petals here dark leaves over there so um, I'm using my grey scale now to tell me how I'm going to darken the flower so I'm going to pick up some more gooey paint now this is much stronger much more viscous paint and I'm going to drop this in where I can see the darker areas and definitely in, in the throat of the flower, there's some dark there, and put these darker shades in. Strong, stronger paint, because I haven't actually added any of the Indian Throw Blue to it yet. But already that's given the flower some contrast. Um, by the way, if you did want to get the image, the grayscale, the outline, uh, the paint along pack with all reference to um, brushes I use, it, colours, etc. Then you can become a patron, uh, which is very reasonable every month. And there's a link to that in the description under this video, okay? And there'll be a link at the end. And it's a really nice uh, way to get monthly watercolour prompts, okay? Right, so that's some darker colour going on now. And again, at the moment, just to show you, the paint, uh, the surface of the paper 
it's still moist all over so we've still got a bit of work in time so let's now pick up some more of that gooey orange and a tiny tiny bit this is how small tiny bit see look at that just that speck tiny tiny bit more just a small small amount a whisper I'm practically using the last hair of the point of this brush there see now that's given us this is the complement of that orange and it's given us that darkened tone which I'm going to reinforce again some darker areas in there petal just darkening it down a little bit I'm painting this wherever I see that darker shade in my photograph and my grey scale. Darker under there where that part of the petal is out of the light. Right, so now what we can do with a thirsty brush, that's a brush that's been moistened really well and then dried on a cloth. Let me show you that. I'm using a, a flat brush to do my, to make my thirsty brush. So this is a flat sort of half inch brush. I've moistened it and then dried it. And now I'm going to come back into the flower before it dries completely and lift out some more of these highlights, some more highlights. So where I can see a, a, a paler area, lift down in there. And sometimes when I want to have a gradual change from very light to sort of mid, I press the brush and then gradually lift it off like that. So. That's how I'm getting the gradual change, like here will be a gradual change. Okay, it starts off very light, a bit more actually, very light and then changes and down the centre of that flower is the central sort of vein and I'm going to do another one like that on this petal. So a bit of a highlight on the edge there. I'll zoom in now a bit more. Some of these highlights when you wipe them out they might bleed um, back in because watercolour is still moving all the time so you might need to repeat some of your highlights. That's a very pale one there on the right hand side of this petal. And luckily because I've put the masking fluid on there I haven't got to lift out the uh, stamens there for those middle elements of the flower. I'm just going to put a little rim, a bit of the edge of the petals catching a bit of light there. And then some very sharp, so I'm using the, using the brush in a perpendicular way like that, you know, 90 degrees and then sucking up. Some more to make those veins, those telltale veins that these lilies have, don't they? I feel I need to redo this one, so I'm starting sort of flattish on my brush and then very lightly leaving the page in a, a gradual way rather than abruptly. 
redo this one because that one's got lost. There's a curve there in that vein. And there's a bit of a highlight. Each time I'm, I'm rinsing my brush, okay, I'm rinsing my brush and drying it after each lift. Make this little corner pop above the petal that's below it. Now if you feel at, the, uh, at this point that these highlights are too bright, we will be able to correct it in the next stage. But for now I just want I want them done so that we've got some structure in the plant and we can all, always diminish them when the flower when the florit is dry, bone dry, we can come along with a very pale glaze of the orange and just brush that over and that'll sort of dissolve things very slightly and, and make those highlights less white. Okay. Let's see what else. Uh, Few more sort of sharp veins there. This corner of petal is definitely paler. sharp lift out again down into the centre of that leaf. Right, so at this point I'm going to let everything dry. I'll see you in the next clip. Right, so everything's bone dry now and as you can see the highlights on the flower are almost as white as the paper whereas in reality they're actually a bit yellowy. Now because we've got the limitation of just using two colours in watercolour ways, we only ever use one colour and it's complement, I uh, will need to use that orange in a very pale glaze to paint over the flower just to knock those whites back a little bit. If I was using another, if I were using any number of colours, I would probably paint over a yellow veil of colour like Oriolin or something like that. But let's just use our complementary colours and see what we get. So I'm going to pick a bit of the cadmium orange hue, put it in the middle, add some water to it and make it quite dilute. See, that's the dilution I've got. And now I'm just going to very gently brush over the highlights that I wiped out in the previous section, but I'm not obliterating them completely. Can you see it's just knocking them back a degree, okay? And this will dry a bit paler as well. So I've what I've done now is I've sort of brought the flower together a little bit more. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do <coughs> is I'm going to use a smaller brush and I'm going to pick up some more cadmium orange hue. And this is a stronger, thicker mix, as you can see. It's not dripping off my brush, but it's liquid, uh, but it's pigmented enough to be covering, you know, the base of the palette. You can't see the white of the palette anymore. Now I'm going to add a tiny speck of Undanthrone Blue. See how that darkens that orange a little bit, just very gradually, tiny, tiny bit. Go in small increments, small amounts. See, I see I've probably put too much in there now. But if you mix it all through, the whole petal, then you've got a darker colour there. Okay, now I feel like I need to make a few darker areas in the flower. So I'm going to paint these in the base. The base of the flower where it would be a lot darker. So I'm painting into the heart of the flower and then Brushing out from there. Now 
and maybe a few more veins as well. And go darker under here. We zoom in a little bit more. Okay. We have a few more veins right out to the tip on this one. And then they sort of it curves around following the curve of the of the leaf. And the great thing is that we'll be able to rub away this uh, rubber mask and it'll give us a lovely crisp edge when we're finished. A bit darker under there. Okay, so we've got, a, we've got quite a good bit of contrast now as per our um, grayscale. Right, I'm going to let everything dry now and then we're going to put in some very strong shadows. So let this get bone dry, probably half an hour or just gently waft it with a hairdryer. Okay, let's get these very strong shadows in now. So back to this mixture, I'm going to add much more cadmium orange hue. we need to go darker than the darkest area that's currently on there okay so let's add some more indanthrone blue to that a bit more orange mix it all through a bit more cadmium orange hue i don't want it to go um so dark that it looks out of place so i'm gonna uh, add some more orange to that <coughs> see how that looks. Now the strongest shadows as per the grayscale and the colour image are here. Look there's a cast, uh, cast shadow from this petal onto this petal that's sticking out and the stamen and the head of the stamen, the anthers I think they're called, and then there's some cast shadows there of the stamen and anthers and there's a very strong cast shadow there and um, very dark shadow under there. And, and very, very, very dark in the centre again. It's almost black, isn't it? So let's get those colours in. Zoom in a bit more. And this dark will really push this front petal forward and there's a dark edge along there. There's a bit of a dark <coughs> shadow in there. Down. And there's that shadow there of one of the stamens with an anther. And then there were a couple more sort of breaking away like that. I'm going to flick up some fine lines from the heart of the flower. See that reflection? It looks believable now, doesn't it? Because it's more or less the same colour family, same colour shadow family and it looks okay now this shadow comes right over that crisp edge crisply and then this is breakaway stamen and then the anther on the top that funny little shape is that sort of thing and then very dark on the tip there and very dark right in there hidden away then there's a dark, a very dark piece on this shoulder here of this petal. I'm going to come darker down in here as well. Just a very fine line there. Very fine lines. Right, and there's a bit of a, a rolling edge there which is darker. 
a little tiny bit there. So basically wherever you can see the strongest of shadows, get them in. A bit of a shadow there as well. Right, I'll just taper that away more finely because it looks a bit clumpy there. Right, the final thing as I want to add now are these anthers here. And then when we rub the masking fluid away, we'll, ha we'll be able to do very pale stamens because the masking fluid will have saved that for us. There's another one there. Right, so there's the stamens in the middle now, okay? So again, let everything dry and then we're gonna rub away the masking fluid and see how it's looking, okay? All right, so let's see how it's looking. <clears throat> I'm rubbing the masking fluid off with the side of my thumb. But you can buy those mask away um, transparent white sort of block things that if you want to use that. Stamens are looking nice and white. We can modify those with a little bit of an orange uh, sort of touch of paint just to make them fuse with the rest of the flower and the masking fluid has done a fab job isn't it of preserving that outer edge for us I'm happy with that so far right so let's get a little bit now of cadmium orange hue just a tiny bit about that sort of dilution nice and fresh and clean and we'll apply this to the stamens now, if I zoom in a bit more. Just to kill the white. There's our daylily. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this watercolor whiz. If you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel, please click the red subscribe button and then click the gray bell as well. If you want to give this tutorial a thumbs up, that really helps and it counts for my ratings. And if you want to leave a comment about it at all, and you could type the words watercolor whiz, believe it or not, that helps my ratings too. So. I appreciate that, thanks very much. And as I say, if you want to join my Patreon group, you get monthly watercolour prompts. Uh, there are over 50 now, uh, going back to August last year. You get instant access to all of those real-time tutorials with all the support packs, as well as all my 14 watercolour whizzes that I've done since I started, all for as little as £3 a month. So it's a really flexible membership and it's affordable. You can, you can stop and start as you want. So that's a nice group to belong to. I'd definitely go over and check that out. So thanks for watching. I'm Alison Fennell, the Pottering Artist, and I hope this helps you with your watercolour. Bye for now.